The first thing we do in any new Go project is we initialize a module. We can do that with the command go mod init. And so that's what this lesson is going to be all about. So first of all, let's create a folder which will house this project. And each project in Go Bytes will just be a small self-contained lesson. Okay, so this one is going to be all about go mod init. So therefore, I will call the directory go mod init. We shall cd into there. And then I'm going to run that command. So go mod init. Okay, and then what you need to do is you need to follow this with a name. Now, a lot of the time, what you'll see is someone will use the path to a repo on GitHub. So uh, it will be the name of the project will actually be where you can find the project publicly. So in the build your first go app course, this is what I call the project github.com Gary Clark first go app and that's where you can go and find the project but in this one and for most go bytes what we're going to do is we're just going to give these the same name as the lesson so like I've called the folder go mod in it I'm going to call module go mod in it and you should see something like this it tells you it's creating a new go module called go mod in it and then if I do an ls here, you'll see that inside of that folder, it's created as a file called go mod. So let's go and check that out. Okay, so I've opened this up in GoLand. This is just what I use for Go code. You can use VS Code or whatever you're comfortable with. But I've always used JetBrains products and I find them uh, easy because I'm just familiar with it. But like I say, use whatever you want to use. Now this is going to be the structure for all GoBytes. Everything lives in the GoBytes repository. And then inside of there, just underneath the top level, you'll see every lesson that we add. So this is the first lesson that I've added to the repository and that's why we only see one lesson in here. And then inside of there, there's just one file, go mod. And this is what it contains. So what I'll do here is I'll drop in some comments to help us. Now it should be quite easy to work out what's going on, but I've dropped the comments in here. So module, this is the name of the module, but like I say in the comment just above this, it also, or it can also be used as the import path if someone wants to use your code. So say you came up with a Go library, then instead of uh, having just a random name like this, what you would use is the actual path to where they can import your library on GitHub or wherever uh, you want to host it. Okay, and the next one, Go 1.25.3. This is just the version of Go which has been used to generate this module. So this tells Go which version of the language this module was created with. It doesn't restrict you. You can still build with this. You can still build this with any Go version, which is equal to or greater than 1.25.3. And that's all there is to it. You've just initialized your first Go module. So going forward, I won't actually take this step in the video. You can assume I've done it before the video starts because we just want to get into uh, writing code from here going forward. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want YouTube to show you more Go Bytes, then make sure you give the video a like. Also, make sure that you're subscribed. And if you have a friend that's learning Go, why not share this with them also? I'll see you in the next one.